Okay, going up on my Facebook page in just a matter of moments, uh, we'll give you the ccbc.edu website where you can find out more about their aviation school. What are you most proudest of? It's got to be these students, as you keep oh, I- saying during the break. They go from zero to everything. Absolutely. It's amazing watching them uh, go from uh, not knowing anything about doing this. A lot of them have an idea of, of, of what, what it's about, but not the physical and the, and the mental uh, training right now to get it done. And it's amazing watching them going from zero to at semester four, just sitting back uh, in a chair if they're controlling tra- uh, radar traffic in, in the uh, simulators, like they've been doing it forever. Um, and then uh, for when they're out in the tower, talking to, to the airplanes or talking to the pilots like they've been doing it uh, forever. Mental toughness, big part of uh, what they do. Absolutely. Who, who, what kind of body chemistry do you have to have, DNA, to, to, to be good at this, do you think? You know, that's, that's a real good question. You really don't know if, if this is for you until you're in it. In it. Um, I think uh, part of it is uh, being a type A personality. You want to be in control, and you want to do it right every time. It's it's what the the aviation uh, community kind of or the general public kind of demands. We don't we don't have a second chance at, at doing it. A lot of openings in this profession, and why? The uh, controllers, um, uh, a lot of openings coming up. Um, if uh, you believe what we've been told. In the next uh, probably six or seven years, they're going to need an, about a th- little under a thousand new controllers per year, and that's to uh, fill in for the controllers who are retiring, uh, reaching age uh, 56 mandatory retirement after the uh, 1981 uh, uh, 18, uh, controller strike. So 56 mandatory retirement Man- mandatory for for controllers. So someone that gets into this program right out of high school. They get a job after graduation, mm-hmm. or hopefully thereabouts after graduation. They can uh, have a whole nother life after. Oh, absolutely. I mean, it's uh, like I tell my students is, you know, there are kind of four rules. Work hard, study hard, play hard, stay focused. And before you uh, know it, age 56 is around, and then you're going, uh-oh, uh, now what? And <laughs> if, you, if you've done it right and, you, and you've saved a little money, uh, now it's time to play. Or, or, or do, do whatever. Do whatever. You know, you're probably old enough to remember the TV show Sky King. Oh, absolutely. I mean... <laughs> yeah, brought to you by Nabisco. He was, ah, there he, you go. He was the cowboy <laughs> in the sky, and he basically... And Penny. Yeah, uh-huh. Penny. There you go. But I mean, and, and I don't remember when it ran the first time. I actually watched the reruns, but I, I just loved it. Mm-hmm. And I've always been in love with, with flight. And you you know, you know, think about Ted Williams, the great baseball player, who was a fighter pilot for mm-hmm. the Marines, and Ed McMahon in Tonight Show, he too. Was absolutely, yes. Do you think about these top guns, and obviously Tom Cruise in the movie, and who they are and what they are? Tell me about the makeup of these people, because I find them so intriguing. They really have to be a little gregarious, a little cocky, obviously have to believe in what they do. And I think all these kids playing these great computer games today, and I think that there are much more good things that come out of these computer games than bad, and you have to really step back and watch your children play them to understand communication skills, skills hand-eye mm-hmm. coordination. But it's amazing who these people are, but with where children are today, especially I've got a 14-year-old son, I think we're going to have a whole other generation of great pilots to come. Oh, absolutely. And, and, the, and the, it's opening wide open now uh, with the retirement of... Um, they changed the rules here five years ago for the airline community and to age 65. All of us are retiring now. There's a big, big hole that's uh, that's forming that's going to have to be filled. And you go back and you say, okay, for for the pilots, you want to believe. And if you don't believe this, that's that's a problem. If you don't believe you are the best stick out there, then I want to talk to you with a ball bat, so to speak. <laughs> You know, yeah, I get you, it. You got to believe when you strap the bird on that you are the best stick out there. And because you don't get a second chance, so to speak, you got to do it right each and every time. And and you talk to the fast mover drivers and uh, having trained some of them uh, when I was in, in flight school uh, training uh, at, in the Air Force. You got to believe. And that's what we trained. That's one of the things we look for is you got to believe every time you strap the bird on, there's nobody better. All right, take me to the air chair. you got that right palm gripped tightly on that throttle, and you're pushing it forward, and all of a sudden 
you realize the wheels are off the ground. That to me, uh, oh, it's it's amazing. Yeah, I, I, every time I take the take the active, every time I take the active, it's it's you like you said, you take the you take the throttles and you start moving them forward, and the airplane starts going. And Here we you go. have all that power, oh, my. Uh, you know, especially in, in the bigger airplanes. Now, my airplane isn't as powerful, but but in the bigger airplanes, you start blasting down the runway. And, it, and, and just in the T-38s, when I was flying T-38s in the Air Force, um, you take the throttles and you push them forward and you go into burner. And all of a sudden, you're rocketing down the runway at the speed of heat. <laughs> and uh, you're doing, th- and the nose starts coming up. The nose is up, main gear brake ground, and your hands just go gear and flaps. And by the end of the runway, you're doing 300 knots. Woo. I mean, you, you just your hair is on fire. And I mean, it, there is no <laughs> other feeling like it in the world. None, none. And it, then it, when you're finally in the air, you look to your left, look out to the clouds, and look down to those people that yeah. are the size of ants, and go, "This is as close to God as anybody at, can get while on Earth." Just. As in as it is in the poem, absolutely. And you, and you're up in there, and, and especially when I was flying those that kind of equipment, and you look down on the ground and you go, and you watch the traffic, and you know that 95, 98 percent of the people on the ground there in the cars are going to someplace to and from someplace that they don't want to go to and from, mm-hmm. and here you are, turning yourself upside down and inside out, or even when I was flying for the airline. Uh, Launching out of DC in particular, and you and you see all the red lights, uh, either in the early morning or late at night type stuff, and and you realize that you're getting I'm getting paid to do this, I am getting paid to do something that I've always dreamed of doing. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to say thank you to Corky Romeo and everyone uh, for putting this uh, together. It's been a joy having you here. He's the director of the flight school, Aviation School, CCBC. It's up on the Facebook page if you want to find out more. Keep up the great work. And boy, it's been a lot of fun. It's been. And just remember, you have to have confidence to wear a jumpsuit and look good in it. There you go. At the same time. (laughs) All right. We'll take a break. Uh, We'll come back. News at 7.